Are you all right? I don't know. The guy in 402, Dixie, thinks that he... I know. He... Edmund told me. I don't know. I can't quite take it all in. If the more you think about it, the more sense it makes. Where are you going? To talk to her. Oh, well, all right, but he doesn't know any of this. So if you talk to him, if you tell him, please, just please go easy. Absolutely. I should go with you. He didn't exactly take to you the first time. Dixie, the first time, I had no idea who I might be dealing with. Thanks, but I've got to do this alone. After all, it's the way Nola would want it. This is going to take a while. You're probably exhausted. Perhaps you should go back to the house. I'll stay. As long as it takes. Well, I have quite a bit of work to do, so I really should go. Could it wait just a minute? We haven't had a chance to talk for a long time. Well, there's really nothing for you and I to talk about. I mean, the only thing that's going on is this, and uh, I've already told Tad everything that I know, so. I know, that's what I would like to talk about. You know, Brooke, I don't want to talk about your marriage, okay? It's fine with me. We have nothing to discuss. Got it? So, you have nothing to be concerned about? I'm concerned about you, Dixie. I'm concerned about Ted. few things for me. I think it's best if we take the next step alone. I'll be back. I'm sorry. About the four. I know my bedside manner leaves a lot to be desired. I've been up all night, and my nerves are a little ragged. So can we start over? What did she tell you? Everything. Whole story. Then you know she was coming to you. What? The night she found me, she was coming to you. Why? To tell you she loves you. The night before your wedding, she was coming to stop it. We haven't had a chance to talk for a long time. Well, I think that's because there's really nothing to talk about. The only thing to talk about is this, what's going on here and everything I know I've already told Tad, so... Well, that's what I would like to talk about. You know, I don't want to discuss your marriage, okay? Your marriage is not a problem, okay? It's fine. So you really have nothing to be concerned about. Well, I am concerned about you, Dixie. And I'm concerned about Ted. Oh, God, I'm so moved. With all the worthy causes out there, save the whale, save the... You're concerned about little old me. I care about you. Oh. Oh, that is so nice of you. I couldn't help but notice that Ted had a picture of Junior on his bedside table. Well, you know, the last time I looked, photographs were not a controlled substance. You're sort of free to pass them around however you like. I just think that you should be a little careful, that's all. Because what do we really know about this Ted other than he acts peculiar and he has a big chip on his shoulder? Is that how you see him? That's, that's funny, because I, I don't see him that way at all. Maybe because when you look at Ted, you see Ted. I knew it. I really, I, I, I really, I knew it. I've heard enough. Dixie. What? What? Come on, you come in here, how dare you, after your honeymoon, and attack me? I am not attacking you. Really? You just told me that you think that I'm replacing your husband with that poor man in there. That's what you said. What did she tell you? Everything. Whole story. Then you know she was coming to you. What? The night she found me, she was coming to you. Why? to tell you she loves you. The night of your wedding, she was gonna try to stop it. No. 
No. Uh, you didn't just say that. I must be hearing things. You know, friend, you've either got a really sick sense of humor or whatever it is you caught has managed to overheat your imagination. So you say. What is that, code? Don't look at me that way. I'm not the one sitting here making up stories about Dixie and how she wanted to stop my wedding. Where would you even come up with an idea like that? From Dixie? She thought I was you. She told me. The next sound I hear better be you telling me everything she said that night. And I mean everything. Well, I think you owe me an explanation. I don't owe anybody except Dixie. All right, fine, let's talk about Dixie. What the hell were you doing at Willow Lake? I mean, I assume you, you, you followed her there. From where? Look, I'm not leaving here till I get some really basic answers to some simple questions. Now, where did you start following Dixie from? Your parents' dinner, the wedding thing. Well, you certainly get around. Where were you hiding? Outside. I saw this older lady, real grand. Phoebe. She gave Dixie the keys to the cabin. For a getaway. A getaway? From who, me? Look, these aren't <laughs> very tough questions here. Now I assume you went to my folks' house to see me. Why all of a sudden did you decide to go after Dixie? She was hurting. So then what? I rode a boat across the lake. After that? What happened when you got to the cabin? Fever was bad. Dixie opened the door. She was leaving. Where was she going? I told you. Tell me again, where was she going? To find you. You know that for a fact? You know, for someone who talks so much, you don't listen so good. I started to pass out. Dixie took care of me. And the whole time she held my hand, she kept telling me what a fool she was. How much she wanted you back. So the entire time she was talking with you, she thought she was talking to me. Yep. It weren't for me. You and Dixie? Maybe you'd be back together. Maybe it would have ended different. You did a lot for him, Dixie. You saved his life. Well, what else was I supposed to do? I mean, he showed up at, the, at your aunt's cabin with a raging fever. I did what any human being would do for another decent human being. But he wasn't just another human being. You did it all the time thinking that he was Tad. Yeah, so? So what? What difference does that make? You would have done exactly the same thing. I don't doubt any of that. I'm just wondering what you were thinking. You were up the whole night with this man. You didn't know who he really was until the following day. You didn't know. The next day, when you found out, you learned the truth. You must have believed that whole time that he was Tad and that he had left me and come back to you. So. On the evening of my wedding, Dixie decides she finally wants to be with me and instead she gets you. It's gotta be the truth. No one in their right mind would come up with that story. You are in your right mind. Same as you. So what am I supposed to do with this late breaking news? It's your life. That's he, isn't it? Hey, who the hell do you think you are to talk to me like that, huh? To say something like that. You who come sneaking in town to, to peek through windows and hide behind trash cans. 
Right now, I don't give a damn what you think about me, because as far as I'm concerned, you're nothing but a peeping Tom. Everything I told you is true. No. The truth is, if you'd come to me in the beginning, like you said you were going to, instead of going after Dixie where you had no business to be, then... then... Say, you wouldn't have married the other one. Look, it doesn't matter what I thought when I was taking care of Ted. Doesn't it? No. All right, all right. I thought he was Tad when I brought him here. Didn't make any difference. I mean, I mean, got a hold of me right away, told me that you and Tad were married, and that's fine, and I accepted that. It turned out that Ted really needed my help. I got to know him a little bit, and he didn't matter why I came here or who I came here for. Ted is a very good and sweet person. And what about when he finds out that he's Ted Orsini? How do you think he's going to react? Well, I don't know. But I'm sure it can't be any worse than not knowing who you are. Look, I, 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 he'll find out. I'll try and help him as much as I, as I can. But in the meantime, I don't think he's going to hurt anybody. So, not me, not Ted, not anybody. So I hope that puts your fears to rest, okay? I really hope you don't have any more questions. Look, I came here because I was concerned about you, Dixie, and Ted. And because I didn't know how you really felt about things. I know you say that you've accepted the fact that I am married to Ted. But if you have anything at all that you want to say about it, anything, why don't you just say it now? talk to you about you and Ted, okay? I have a sick friend I have to take care of. I've got a child who's waiting on me. I have to have double bypass surgery. I don't want to talk to you about Ted. I don't want to have a heart to heart. You're married. Wonderful. Fine. Congratulations. End of discussion. And that's it? That's it? You don't look back? Well, I do. I think about the time before Ted came home. We were friends, Dixie. Our children played together in the park. I mean, when I found out that Tad was alive, I flew out to California to bring him home. I moved heaven and earth to get the two of you back together. So much for your good intentions. You, know, you went out there, you dazzled him with your brilliance while I was trying to put the pieces of my life back together. You showed him, talked to him about your young son. I guess the message all about me and my life just got lost along the way. Tad got so taken in by the messenger, he married her. That's what happened, isn't it, Brooke? I'm sure it is. You wanted to know what I thought, how I felt? That's it. That's how I feel. Hope it makes you happy. No, it doesn't make me happy. It hurts to hear you say it. But I'm sure it doesn't hurt as much as I've hurt you. And that's what I wanted to say. I'm sorry for the pain that I've caused you. I really am sorry. And I can't pretend that it doesn't exist just because we're not going to talk about it. Brooke, do I look like I'm dying to you? Do, you, do, I, do I look like I'm losing weight? <gasps> like I have unwashed hair, like I, I don't know what day, what time, what month it is. Reports of my breakdowns are greatly exaggerated. I'm fine. Thank you very much for asking. In fact, I'm doing great. Thanks to some very good advice from you, actually. <clears throat> and what advice was that? You, uh, you told me to get a life. You told me to stop leaning on the men in my life. I had no right to say that to you. It was perfectly fine. In fact, I'm grateful because every day and every way, I am getting better and better without a man in my life, without falling apart, and without you dumping your patronizing garbage all over me. I don't need it. I don't want it. So why don't you just focus on your perfect little life and your wonderful husband and leave my life the hell alone? Get out of my way, Edmund. Where's the fire? You go to hell. What's got into him? I told him Dixie loved him, wanted him back. Oh, I get it. I get it. Now you're going to run to Dixie and let her know. 
And then all you have to do is dump Brooke so you can marry Dixie. Is that what you're going to do? You know something? If you ever manage to wake up, you'll realize that Brooke doesn't want to have a damn thing to do with you. She's with me now. I take that to mean you have no intention of divorcing her? Absolutely not. Fine, then stay out of Dixie's life, all right? What do you care about her problems, anyway? They blew up in her face. Fine. Just let her be. She's had enough stuff. What suffering. do you want me to do, Edmund? Pretend, pretend that I don't know what happened here? Yeah, well, that's a great idea. Why don't you fake it, okay? That's not much of a stretch for you. You didn't care much about her feelings before, okay? It all came down to one thing, a choice between your ego and honesty. And we all know which one you chose. I didn't have all the facts. Yeah, well, the facts are these, my friend. Dixie and you played emotional chicken. Who was going to say, I love you first? Well, she finally did, but it was too late because you had married Brooke to salvage what was left of your wounded pride. You finished? No, I'm just getting started. Now you have a chance for a little rematch. Now you can bury Dixie's pride. You can say, Dixie, I know all about that night that you declared your undying love to me. And then you can say, it doesn't make a damn bit of difference. I love Brooke. She's my wife, but that doesn't mean I don't care about Dixie. Yeah, well, Dixie doesn't need your care. She's got friends, she's got family, she's got me. Let me tell you something. She specifically asked everybody that nobody tell you asked me to change your heart. I'm supposed to believe you, I'm just supposed to take your word for that? Ask Joe, ask Ruth. You trust your parents? They knew? Yeah, they knew. And now you know. So let it die right here. Dixie loves you so much, she's willing to give you and Brooke every chance at happiness. You can learn a lot from her. You just concentrate on your marriage. For once, put yourself last. pay as I go. You owed him what? You don't even know Tad. I wrecked things for him and Dixie. I had to set it right. Hey, Mrs. Martin. I've been crazy. How did it go with Tad? I don't even want to get into it right now. The only thing I want to get into is our house, our bed, with you. Our little boy snuggled up close. How's that sound to you? It's the best offer I've had all day. 